What's up YouTube? Today we are back in Synthmaster 3 and I want to show you everything that you need to know about the waveform and wavetable editor. So this is a sponsored video, however this is a tutorial, it's not a promotional piece or anything like that. So I'm purely just going to show you how to use the components within the synthesizer and if you feel like it works for you, then it works for you. That's up to you. Anyway, with that out the way, let's dive in and have a look. So notice in the beginning of the video, I said waveform and wavetable editor. So I mentioned them in two separate categories because Synthmaster 3 deals with those in two different ways. We have the waveform editor for creating single cycle waveforms, and then we have the wavetable editor, which we can use for importing audio files as wavetables, or we can use a variety of the single cycles that we've created in the waveform editor to create a morphable wavetable. So first I wanna go through the basics of the waveform editor, and then I wanna show you the basics of the wavetable editor, how we can kind of use a bunch of the stuff that we made in the waveform editor and create our own custom wavetables, or we can import audio files from existing wavetables or from audio samples. Let's jump into Synthmaster 3 and let's initialize the preset. So I quickly wanna talk about the basics here outside of the editor, just so you understand how to adjust the waveform once you've got your custom waveform kind of created. We do have something similar to like a warp mode here with this algorithm. So we can choose several different algorithms and then this parameter allows us to change that kind of thing. So this is pretty cool because we can just do this on a basic waveform. We don't have to create a wavetable if we're not going for something too complex. We could just load up a basic shape, add a warp mode, and we get some interesting sounds straight away. Okay, so if we wanna create our own custom waveform, we can either click this icon over here with the pencil, or we can go like this and create a new single cycle waveform. And so in this window, there are several ways of creating our own waveforms. We could either use this spline based system where we can move these nodes around, change these bends here, or we can create freehand where we just draw in the waveform like this. And we can also draw in the spectrum over here at the bottom. And then we also have a filter over here. So this line represents the frequency content. So if we want like less low mids and like less of this range and then like a boost in the high frequencies, we can kind of draw that like this. If we like the result, we can click here and we can save it as a waveform. We can also right click here and say create random, which then just like randomly generates, generates us a waveform. Or we can modulate these effects to change the filters. So we also have these grid settings over here. By default, they're off, but we can set these to like a high value and then change to various different shapes that it draws in. So this is like a little noise burst. And then we have like saw up or saw down, various different shapes we can choose from. Oh wait, the filter is still on here. That's actually pretty good. Let's save that. Cool, okay, so once we have a little collection of waveforms, then what we can do is we can start to create our own custom wave tables using a bunch of these waveforms. So what I wanna do is I actually just wanna disable this so we can come back to it later if we want to. And now we can add a new oscillator here by clicking this little icon and saying add new and then saying wavetable oscillator. And here similarly, we can do a similar thing where either the pencil icon to edit the current one, or we can create a new one by clicking the plus icon over there. So here what we can do is we can select these nodes here you see these little triangle or these little diamonds. It's kind of similar to Vital, this editor. So if you know the workflow of Vital's editor here where you have a wave source and then you add effects, and then with each of these keyframes, you can change how that effect morphs. It's very similar to that. So here, for example, in the wave source, 
the first keyframe, we can select one of the waveforms that we've just created here using this cog icon. And then we can select this and morph between that default sine wave and the wave which we just imported now. And then what we can do is we can select this keyframe and then we can add in a different waveform that we created. So you, there's obviously also a bunch of factory waveforms which you can choose from. In this editor, it steps to this amount of frames, so 16 frames, but it's a smooth interpolation here outside of the editor. Oh, that actually sounds really nice. Let's assign an LFO to this index. So let's say add new LFO. We can right click on the index and we can say add modulation and we can choose one of the LFOs, LFO1. And then that adds this panel here, which we can then edit. So for example, here we can say amount that, that would adjust how much modulation is then applied to the index. We can actually hover over this orange here and it will do it as well. Okay, so if we wanted some detune or some unison, we could use this voices panel, set the amount of voices over here. So let's say something like nine and then say pan spread. <laughs> So this drift is really nice because often with, with more complex waveforms, if you unison them, you can kind of hear the phasey interaction quite prominently. And this drift parameter really helps to kind of counteract that. So check if this is on zero. And if we turn it up, it kind of makes it sound a lot more analogy. Let's put some reverb on this, I think. can maybe put some LFO, like let's add a new LFO to this frequency. cool is to layer this over something like a basic shape sine wave so here let's just click this plus to say new single cycle waveform it will default to the sine maybe we can tune it up one octave
Cool, that sounds great. Okay, so here, like I said, it functions very similarly to the vital system in that we can add effects here. We've got several we can choose from. And then if we add the effect, we can actually click on individual keyframes and we can add keyframes by double clicking. And then each keyframe can have a different value, which we then sweep through, right? So here, for example, if we wanted to change the shifter from X and Y up a little bit here and then back down to zero, we could create something very easily like that. And do you see how it now, it, the, the face is shifting there? That shape is wobbling a lot more. And then for importing custom shapes, let's mute this and we can add a new layer here. So let's unmute this layer. And then here we can, we can add a new wavetable oscillator and then let's remove the first one. We can open the editor and drag samples onto this window here. And then it imports them. So I find with these, with audio sample imports, like with most wavetables, actually, I find they generally sound better a couple of octaves down. There's like a tabla sample. And so it's obviously just looping the very first bit of audio. In fact, we can actually choose frames here. Let's set this to 256 and then import. Then we get a lot more of that wave, like it chops the wave file into 256 different pieces rather than just four. So we get a lot more of that sweep. And then here we can actually set the start and the end point. So here you can see we've got this blue line. And we, if we set this to like here, we just have that first part of the sweep. And so we can use that to create some interesting kind of bass, like, uh, like bass sounds, growly stuff. In fact, we can actually, we can kind of do it in reverse where we, modulate it that way. I think that could be pretty cool. So let's turn the index all the way up. Let's add an LFO and then let's just drag this onto the index and then drag it backwards like this. Let's try out some distortion. Oh, this is nice. We can actually draw in a wave shape here, like a wave fold. Very nice from a tabla sample.
Cool. That about sums it up. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you haven't yet, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.